Hey guys, Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. Today we're going to be taking a look at alternate ways that we can find stealth. If you remember in the past, now I've got several vids on finding stealth, I believe on Thief, also on Mafia 3, and also on, we did that in the From Start to Trainer series of Dishonor 2. But if you notice, each single time that I taught you how to look up stealth, you know, to be able to trace back to where they cannot see you, uh, we always use the sight camera. However, there's other ways of detections. There's also sound and touch that they can detect you. And a buddy of mine, it's been a while back ago now, but uh, he was asking, is there any other way to be able to find the stealth value or to have stealth without looking up the sight camera? Because if they can just catch a glimpse of you, I don't really have a bar that it's, you know, just kind of gradually building up to. They either see you or they don't see you. When they start seeing you, they come after you. And uh, is there any other way to do it? Well, it really depends on the game, and every game's different, but a lot of these games have what's called a search parameter. They don't necessarily see you, but they're aware of you, and then they start searching the area for you. And then, after a certain amount of time, there's a timer counting down or counting up to a certain number, and once that timer reaches zero, or it's full value, then, you know, the search is over, they didn't find you, and they'll go back to their post or just stand there. And, uh usually you can use that as well now there are other methods also that you can use possibly use like when you're able to hide in bushes or, or something like that or haystacks or something that conceals you from the enemy like in assassin's creed you sit on a bench or you're in a crowd and you got this r around you where they cannot see you you can possibly look up those values as well so there's all kind of ways that you can get the same type results without having to look up the site cameras so today what we're going to do is i'm going to bring up dishonored death of the outsider uh it's a dlc game or Really, it's actually a new game based off Dishonor 2. But uh, we're going to be using that, and we're going to be finding stealth without ever being seen, without finding a sight camera value like we have in the past. Today, we're going to look up stealth using that enemy's search parameter. So bear with me while I bring everything up, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, thank you for holding, guys. <clears throat> So what I'm going to do is I've already saved my game in a spot. Now what you want to do is find a spot where you're completely hidden. Where even if they pass right by you, they don't see you. And uh, basically uh, it's in regards to, and you can do this in like Far Cry as well, the Far Cry series. As you have things you can throw or shoot at them and it makes them aware. Then they go searching for you like, what was that? What was that? And uh, that's the values we're looking for usually you're going to find these on the float values but also I'm going to show you another way you can weed these down a lot quicker by getting rid of irrelevant values that you just know is not going to be them and it helps uh, with the weeding out process a little better however we do have to scroll through this address list and manually do it but what we do is we look for like truncated values and you know it has those uh, minus offsets and everything like that and exponentials and all stuff we know is probably not going to be and uh, we get rid of them manually as well, and that will help us with the weeding down process also, especially with these 64-bit games. So let's go ahead and get to that area. I've already got it saved there, and we should just go right to it. Now, in this area, there were two guys. I had to kill one of them, and then he went and searched around for a little while, then he gave up the search, and he's back at his post. And that's where I saved the game. So now what we're going to do, we're not going to do any scan until we make him aware because we're you know we just brought the game back up so i'm not even sure if the aobs are set yet so we want to make sure that he is aware that way we know there's an address assigned uh, for that search value and uh, that way we can find it or have a chance of finding it so i also want to turn my other codes on especially my infinite ammo because i'm using my ammo i'm kind of shooting at him i'm not shooting him directly but i'm shooting at him to make him aware and I want to go ahead and put this on a float value. Also, with these bigger type games, it's best to go ahead and pause the game while scanning as well. That'll kind of take a little bit more of the load off the RAM a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and make him aware. And we're going to kind of duck out of sight. And we're going to start our search. So I'm going to shoot behind him. You see he's made aware right there. 
and we're going to say right now we don't know if it's going from a low to a high value or from a high value to a low value so right now just to make life simple for us we're just going to guesstimate and say it went from a zero to a higher value so what I'm going to do now right now we're just doing unknown so when he stops his rounds he stops searching and everything we're going to assume he went back to zero or to a lower number we're going to go decrease value Now I am showing the full search in regards to this. I may cut out some of the, some of him walking around searching, you know, just to save a little time. But uh, I'm not going to do anything with Cheat Engine off camera. I'm going to make sure that you see it because this this is uh, another really hard to find value. And if you know a few little tricks here and there, you can kind of weed them down a lot quicker. So, and that's what I'm going to show you. So let me let me bring this up to this a little bit. There we go. Alright, so now we need to duck out of sight. He will not be able to see us right here. And he's got a sword out. We see that. So we don't really want to mess with this because we don't know if it's constantly fluctuating or not. And he'll usually make a whole lap around this little train car right here. Now he's just noticing his friend that I killed. So we just kind of keep an eye on him and he'll put his sword up and he'll go back to his position or he may just stand where he is but he'll go back to guard mode and that's usually when the flag's been turned off and the bays are back to normal Like I say, I may cut some of this out while he's searching around. I made him aware of me again, so it might last a little longer to go around. I'm just waiting for him to put his sword up and go back to normal. But if you've noticed, we have not let him see us at all. He, We're not going by any type of sight camera. Where there's a, you see that little, when he was aware of us, you saw that little lightning bolt. And... It gradually goes up as he's becoming aware of you or he's seeing you. Now it sounds like he's put his sword up. So let's see what he does. Okay, he's going back to his post. He's got a sword put up. And we're back to zero. Or whatever value it may happen to be. So we're going to go decrease value. And just let Cheat Engine do its thing. I'm going to stay on top of the ram a little bit to kind of help it out. And there we go. We have about five million, so we're just going to go ahead and I have my hotkeys on. You noticed in the past videos I showed you how to set hotkeys. I'll go ahead and show that right quick again. Uh, normally, the hotkeys I use are for increased value, decreased value, changed, and unchanged. And I have all these set the hotkeys, and you can do those up here. And usually, I just set the hotkeys to something I know the game is not using. So. So I'm just using my hotkeys and I'm going to go unchanged value. Because we just decreased it and we're assuming it's back to zero. Alright, let's go back to the game and we want to move around a little bit, get rid of any other miscellaneous values. Kind of look around, camera values, positional values, we want to stand up, get rid of values, weed down as many as possible. Yeah. When we get down to a decent number, we're going to weed them down even more manually. I'm going to show you how to do that. Alright, so now we're going to make him aware. Alright, so now he's aware again. We're going to go increase value. And now we can hit unchanged because the game is paused. However, when we get the game active again, we do not want to do unchanged value because we don't know if that value is fluctuating or not. Okay. So once we click back into the game, I'm just going to lay off until he goes back to guard mode. So now he's in search mode. We're just looking for that awareness flag. It's active when he's 
Searching force is inactive when he's not. He's putting the sword back up, going back to his post. We can safely assume he's back to zero now. So let's go back and we're going to go decrease value. Down to 37,000. And it could take some time to weed a lot of these down and everything. I may cut some of this out, but I'm just doing the exact same thing over and over again. So I'm probably going to cut this and I'm going to keep doing it till I get down to a decent number and I'm not doing anything different than what you just saw. Increase value. Alright, so let me go ahead and uh, cut this and I'll be right back with you when I get down to a decent number. Then I'll show you how to weed some of these down manually. Thank you for holding guys. I'm back. Uh, it took me a little longer than I thought. Uh, I had to play a little cat and mouse with him for a bit. But I did find a better place and that's where I'm going to go to now right quick. But as you can see, we're down about 494. I'm going to show you a little something you can do to weed these out even better. I might as well just show you now while I'm thinking about it. But what I want you to take note of is you see these truncated values here. It has an E on it. These are exponential values. 99 out of 100 times, it's never going to be one of these values. And we can just go ahead and delete them right out of the list. So what I'd normally do is just find long strands of them. You want to be careful because you don't want to accidentally delete a viable value that would make some sense and uh, we can get rid of these two these have truncated in them as well so we can get rid of those but you see what I'm talking about we're already down to 436 and if you kind of look around you can just find long strands of them and just go ahead and get rid of them and get them out of your way now just like that now I'm not gonna sit here and do every single one of them on camera like this I'll do it off camera but I just wanted to show you and you can weed these out because a lot of times these are going to stay as you're searching and they just they're just in the way and they so many values here and you got to pick through them best just to go ahead and get rid of them if you can if you want to put the work into it it'll make it a lot easier when you're trying to find these hard to find values so I'm going to go ahead and go up to the uh, no we're down to 379 now so let's go ahead and go to that new spot that I found. Uh, where's it? They're right here. Come on, get up there. <clears throat> there we go. All right, so we know he's at zero. I'm just gonna keep hitting unchanged because that's the last thing I did was decrease the value. Let's just look, see if we got any more. Just right quick, long strands of them. I don't know if we do or not. Just a couple right here. Don't really matter. And I, like I say, I'm going to do the rest of these off camera. Ooh, look at that. All the way down to about right here. There we go. Down to 291. So that'll really help you out too. So let's go ahead and just keep going here. Increase value. And I'm going to let him go do his search, and he'll do that for a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some more of these exponential values, but I'm going to go ahead and cut it while I do that, so I'll be right back with you. And we're just going to put it unchanged. And we're down to 79, so that's really good. So let me get up to my little perch point up here. It's a better, better spot because we can always duck back down. Come on, get up there. There you go. Down to 53 now. Sorry about that. Down to 49. So that'll really help you. And I, I weeded some of those out earlier. That's why I was down so low. I, I did that off camera. But I wanted to show you what I was doing. And uh, sometimes you'll just see long strands of them. Now you got to be careful. Because you don't want to miss viable values. That could possibly be it. But if it has one of these E's in it. Get rid of it. More than likely, it is not going to be the value you're looking for. And that way you can just deal with these values. When you're trying to find flag values and the game's going to crash down on you and everything, uh, you want to uh, get everything out of the way that you possibly can. And especially with encrypted values. And I think we've all <laughs> felt the sting of that one. So, Alright, let's go back. And I'm going to go ahead and let him see us. 
All right. So what I'm wanting to do, I got the game paused now. We see some did not change, so we know those are no good. We can get rid of those. The ones that did not change at all. ones that are still changing we can get rid of those and you see how we can just manually do this as well to get rid of things we don't need look we're down to 18 look at this exponential values right here very good and things that are changing and did not change and take a look we're down to 13 so every one of these could possibly be our value, but we just want to be careful. And we want to try to grab stuff that makes sense. Now what makes sense to me is that it started out at zero when he was not aware of us, and that it went up from there. I don't think it reached one. I think one is when he is actually fully aware of us. So I think it's either this one, this one, or this one. And I like to uh, try things that make sense. Now, it could possibly be like a standard flag value going from a 1 to a 0. But if you noticed, it can't be these as well. And the reason being is because we started at a low value and increased to a high value. We just increased and it went from a 1 to a 0. So it's not those. Let's just try these out because I really believe it's one of these. And I want to put these back to 0. And if he goes back to his perch, and what he does, take a look. Take a look at that. So let me see if I can shoot off of, see what happens. And take a look. He's putting the sword back up. What happens when we take these off here? Takes the sword out. Now here he comes. He's, he's a running. Well, we know it ain't that bottom one because it went back to zero. We know he's not at zero right now. So it has to be one of these two. So let's change him to zero and get out of his line of sight. And look, he's heading back down. I think it's that top one right here. I really believe that's it. I'm just going to shoot another round off. Take a look. Oh, that's it. Yep. And there you go. So now all we need to do is just find a, a good opcode location. And uh, basically I'm going to do a little back tracing to see if we will take care of the sight, sound, and touch. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to place a debugger on it, find out what accesses this address. Alright, we see things are accessing it now, but I want to do it when he's becoming aware of us. And we see we have some opcodes that pop up here. I'm going to go to the earlier or the smaller address first. I like to try the smaller first because we know it hits this one before it hits this one. So if it gets modified before it, when it hits this one, we know it's going to be modified when it hits this one because it's a bigger address. So that means it's on down the list somewhere. So we know it's going to hit this one first. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one in the disassembler memory view. And we see we're in a big area that's handling all kind of things right here. And I'm, I'm willing to bet that a lot of this has to do with detection. But let's go ahead and stop this. What I want to do is I want to see if any other addresses are going through it right now. Now, I know other enemies would be going through their detection meters, but I just want to see if it pops up immediately or if we have to, you know, make him aware for it to pop up. That lets me know if I need to put a condition on it. And no address is popping up right now, so let's make him aware. And there, there it was. So, we don't need to put a condition on it. We can just put a regular break, break and trace on it. We can go ahead and take that zero off. So we know it will only break when we do something to make him aware. So it'll go down the call structure. And there it goes. Goes down the call structure of just when he starts to become aware. So let's go ahead and right click and expand all. 
and this is everything that happened with that opcode before it got to that opcode and you see it's about to write the, the aware value in there into the, our address float point six zero and this is everything that happened this is where he probably heard it this is where he started becoming aware and it's about to move that he goes to search this is our searching value right here he's gonna search while that's point six zero so what I want to do is I want to go above this particular call structure. Now remember what we said last time. This happened first. This was a call. It hit, uh, or excuse me, this was a function. It hit a call. Then it jumped to this line. It hit another call. It jumped to this line. It hit another call. And then it hit this one. And it's going to run all the way down till it hits a return. Then it starts going back up the tree. Back to the previous call, which is this line. And we double click on it and brings us here. Here's the call that took us there. And anything that goes above it happened back in time. That's We're going back in time if we go above that call. This has already happened. This hasn't happened yet. You understand what I mean? So it's coming back to here once it gets done running this particular function. All right. So what I want to do is we can take a look at it now. We can do this several ways. We can select the current function, go up there and put a return. We could possibly just knock out that call. But if we take a look, we see we got a jump right here. And it's a conditional jump. It's doing a compare. And it says jump if the value of this address is above or equal to whatever the value is in RDX. So we know that there's a condition set that it's going to jump all the way to 0B1F, which is all the way here. It even shows us that it comes all the way down to here, and it completely jumps over that call. And it also jumps over this conditional compare that will send it back up here. So it jumps over everything viably. So what would happen if we changed that jump if above or equal which is the same as the conditional jump of jump if greater than or equal to they're both that, that's the exact same they do the exact same thing so jump if greater than or equal or jump if above equal or the exact same thing so what would happen if we made that from a conditional jump to an unconditional jump what an unconditional jump means we'll have it jump regardless regardless if it meets this condition or this compare and what we do is we change this just memorize it that's J A E and we're just gonna put jump so every time it hits that it's gonna jump regardless so we just made it an unconditional jump let's go see what happens oh and he's on his way let's put that back down to zero Take a look. He walked right by me. So it looks like that'll work. But it won't write the zero back to the address. So we can still use that. If it's already zero, it will never go up. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and start a script. There we go. It would jump if above or equal, so we're going to change it back. Let's see if we can do an AOB injection. We're going to put stealth one. Let it do its scans and see if. And it says here cannot find a unique array of bytes. So this we cannot use. So that means that there's other areas in there, and instead of making it more unique, just to save us some time here, um, normally what we do is we would uh, we would go to address and just copy it, and we come down here, go to address, 
paste the same address in and then we just kind of play around with these bytes until we found a unique one but I'm not going to do that because just take too long and what I'm going to do we already know we're going to make that a jump and we're let me uh, let me change the view I'm going to show the module addresses right quick and uh, all we really need is this address so we can put a code injection right here because we're going to make that jump regardless an unconditional jump so that's going to make that compare totally irrelevant so we can actually put that jump right underneath that load effective address opcode and just have it jump from this location right before the compare down to where it was going to to jump over that call so let's try that instead and I don't do code injections too much but uh, if the game updates or anything like that then it's not going to work on updated versions we'll have to redo this but just for the sake of the tutorial we're just going to do a code injection and we don't have to bother labeling anything all we really need and what I want to do is go back to that jump and I need to copy that information to clipboard bytes and opcode and I want to bring up a notepad right quick and all we really need is where it's going to jump to right there we're going to copy that we're going to go back to our script there she is and remember that compare is now irrelevant we don't need it so we're going to take that out and the reason that the compare showed up is anytime anytime you put a code injection on something it's going to it's going to create a jump to your allocated memory it's allocating memory so it's got to jump to that allocated memory well anytime you make a jump to an address that has to be a jump to an address is five bytes you see that this is only four of this opcode so it's having to borrow a byte from this opcode as well and it's having to knock out the access bytes so we need five bytes for the jump to another address which is one two three four Five, and we need three knops and if you take a look right here it's a jump which equals five bytes and access knops and you can see the bytes down here one two three four five which equals our jump and the access bytes which we need three knops so if you ever wonder how it's calculating that a jump to an address always equals five bytes okay most of the time <laughs> all right but be that as it may, we don't need to compare because we're making that totally irrelevant and we're going to paste in that jump if above or equal and we're going to change that to an unconditional jump where it always jumps to this address. Always, always, always. So we're assign that to the current cheat table and we'll just put stealth test. Now this, this awareness should keep us safe from anything, from sight sound and touch he should never be aware of us because it's never bringing up his awareness value it's always staying at zero so what I did sorry about that I went ahead and reloaded up a previous save game where the enemies are back in action and I'm we're gonna go ahead and try out this stealth test and let's go back to the game now you see I'm in another area this is where I first started where you first start seeing enemies Take a look. He does not see me. And this is the beginning of the game, so it'll have these little tutorial things to come up, so sorry about that. Take a look at this. Now watch when I turn it off. When I turn this off, boom. Now the bad part is, is that now they are aware of me, and so there's nothing really going to write it to zero. So we got to figure out a way around that. But as soon as they lose sight of me, they don't see me no more. See, look. So we still need a way for it to remain zero so what we do is we're going to go back to these addresses right here 
and we see an earlier address where it is constantly reading. We're going to move zero into there, and that way we got a backup. Let's go to this one, and that's all we're going to do is move a zero. So now we got two different stealth codes, and both should work just fine. So I'm going to put this as stealth two. This vid has went on way longer than I wanted it to. I'm terribly sorry about that, but I wanted to show you guys this. I have had tons of questions in regards to it. Is there other ways to do this other than the sight camera? Because certain games just will not let you do it that way. And the answer is yes. But it just depends on how much work you want to put into it. And getting stealth or any of these hard to find values is never easy. Uh, you just got to find ways to make it easy for you. And I misspelled float. I seem, I seem to do that often. And you don't really need to put float for zero. You just need to put zero because float zero is zero. But it's always good practice to do that so you're not making mistakes later on. And we'll just put that as stealth too for right now. And we can combine scripts later. I'm not going to do that on the vid. <clears throat> Alright, so now let's take a look at it. So I'm going to turn both off. He sees me. We're gonna turn. I'm just gonna turn that bottom one on. I'll see what happens. All right, he sees me. He's hitting me. So that's not really moving zero into there. So let's try to this way. And now he doesn't see me. So once we combine these two scripts, we'll have perfect stealth. Or we can turn it on and off at any time we want to. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But I'm not going to really get into it. I've showed you tons and tons of times how to do this. And uh, come join us over at the Cheat the Game Facebook channel. We have a lot of game hackers that hang out there that will be happy to help you. Uh, a lot of people get a little frustrated because they'll put a comment up there. And if we don't answer within three minutes, uh, they start getting frustrated. Uh, we don't live on the site or anything like that. But uh, you know, we do check in occasionally. And if... Uh, if it's something that we can help you with, we certainly will. And if we don't know, we'll see if we can get you to a resource that does. But like I say, we don't really go into online games or anything like that. But we will help you with assembly questions, coding questions, or value lookup questions. And also, we do have our website up and running at cheatthegame.net. That's at cheatthegame.net. Make sure to come over and sign up. We'd love to have you over there. Also, I want to thank my partners right quick. Uh, these donate to my Patreon. These help keep the website going, and uh, we really appreciate all the help you provide. Also, if you want to donate, uh, we really appreciate it. All we ask for is a dollar a month, and you will become a partner, and your name will be up here on vids to come. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to do that. But thank you all so much for all your time and all your patience. And we do appreciate all your support. Well, guys, that's all I really have time for. You all take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas, because believe me, it doesn't mind cheating you. You all take care now. <laughs>